Those of you who are taking thesis seminar this spring 2024 semester, I want to spend a few minutes talking about a research matrix and Excel spreadsheet that we're going to be looking at and uh, we'll, we'll begin completing this matrix from the first week. You can find this research matrix Excel spreadsheet in Microsoft Teams under channels, under files. So if we go into this matrix, the first week, we're going to need to add our names to this file. We'll to add your student ID. And I would try to include some kind of working title. Now, I know that maybe we're still making decisions about what to include in our literature review. Perhaps we're starting completely uh, from scratch. Maybe we're starting to develop a completely new literature review, which is fine. But try to think of a title, a wor and I say working title because, of course, it can change as we're just getting started uh, in the semester. But it does give you and I both an idea about more or less what kind of study that you want to do. We need to complete in the first week the problem. And I would begin by using the sentence prompt. The problem is, and then complete the sentence. One or two sentences is plenty, but think of the problem. This is the uh, basically going to be the significance of your study. Why are you doing this study? To address what kind of problem. So again, think of the prompt. The problem is, and then complete that sentence. The week of class, we need to have some research questions in mind. Again, this can change. These are questions that we're considering that relate to our study. And it's not necessary to have a general research question and then more specific research questions. I would rather you think in terms of simply two to four research questions that pertain to your study and leave it at that. So the first week, I'm going to ask that you include some questions here. But again, these can change at any point. Well, not at any point, but they can change as you are developing your literature review and we're getting closer to the method section when we'll begin to collect data for our study. The target par participants. It's not too early to begin looking for schools, asking for permission, giving them approximate dates of when you'll begin your data collection. We'll talk about this the first day of class. But it's important this first week to start looking around and making commitments. And uh, we'll talk about an informed consent form in class. But in this section, in this spreadsheet, the first week, I'd like for you to think of participants that you're planning on including. How many participants? How old are they? What level of English do they have? The uh, school, is it a private or a public school? Is it an elementary school, high school, university, et cetera? Include that information here. Again, if you go into the second week, third week, fourth week, even up to the fifth week, and things change, that's fine. This is a this is going to be a working document that uh, we're going to be updating week to week as we progress throughout the semester. But this first week of uh, class, I am going to ask that you think of potential target participants, whether you've confirmed with them or not. But I would again suggest that you start the process of looking for participants. The column that says studies to replicate, what this refers to is finding one or two studies, at least, if you find more, great, but try to find at least one or two studies that you can take from and replicate for your own study. Now, what do I mean by replicate? If you get a study, let's say they focus on certain, a certain type of participants, Maybe you replicate and you focus on the same type of participants. Maybe they're elementary students at a basic level that struggle with speaking. And in the study that you found, these are the target participants and you want to do the same thing. This is an example of replicating part of a study. You can replicate a lot of things. You can replicate the way that you collect the data. Did they use a, a questionnaire? Did they 
Is it a survey? Um, we're going to be talking later about these types of studies, but it, it's going to help you if you can find certain studies that you can use as a model for doing your own study. It doesn't mean that you absolutely have to replicate a study, but I always recommend that you do try to find opportunities to replicate some aspects of a study. And you can replicate, you know, if you find a study that you want to do almost exactly the same kind of study in terms of how you collect the data, what instruments you use, the time frame that you have to collect the data, the types of participants, all of those aspects of a study can be replicated. And if you find opportunities to do that, my suggestion will always be to replicate, find opportunities to replicate a study. All right, so getting started here, it, this is going to um, you know, be something that we're, we're going to be talking about. And I'm going to suggest that you try to replicate or find studies to replicate. But this first week, you may or may not be able to find those. All right, so hopefully you can try as you're reading through the literature to find those. And one last thing I'll say about finding studies to replicate, it may or may not even be studies that you use to cite to support other parts of your paper. Okay, it just may be a method, a method a part of the method section that helps you with making decisions about how you want to collect your data and analyze it and what kind of participants and so on. All right, the next column here, eight studies. Minimum, we're going to need eight studies from peer-reviewed journal articles. So I'm going to ask that you include those citations. All right, I'm asking really just to include citations in these two columns. And you can separate those citations with a semicolon. But make sure that you have at least eight peer-reviewed journal articles as a minimum. Of course, you can have more, but this is as a, as a minimum. And then later throughout the semester, we'll be updating this portion of the matrix as we finalize our informed consent form, our literature review method section, and results and discussion section. I've added notes here, so always check or refer to the notes to see what I'm recommending that you include in each of these columns. Basically, this is what we're going to be doing for week one. Each week, we'll be revisiting this matrix and completing it and adding to it. But again, the first week, I'm going to ask that you add your name, student ID, working title, problem, research questions, and target audience, or target participants, I should say. If you can find studies during week one, wonderful. Keep add that here. Okay, but if not, um, I would say by at least the third or fourth week, we need to have uh, a clear idea of which studies we want to replicate. And certainly by the end of our literature review, once we've completed our literature review, we'll need to have completed this column, column H. All right, so if you have any questions, let me know. Feel free to reach out to me. Send me a chat in Microsoft Teams if you need further clarification. But of course, we'll be talking about this and during our, the first day of class.